Yes. So when we are working with Oracle Fusion applications while learning or while working, documentation is very important for functional consultant. Because we are supposed to interact with the business users and try to understand the business of the client current business flow. And then we have to go for prepare a documentation and we are supposed to suggest sometimes the uh, suitable implementation process to the client. Generally, suggestions can be done very senior level, like senior level functional consultant or solution architect. But still, as a team member also, for example, even if we are applying as fresher or three to four years of consultant experienced, then we are supposed to uh, have in a position to prepare the documentation and understand the documentation. How we can improve the documentation skills when we are working in the project, right? So for that, what Oracle says, you are supposed to go through the Oracle documentation. That is a very good practice. That is a very good practice. For example, in procurement module, we have three different types of purchase orders. We have standard purchase order, blanket purchase agreement, contract purchase agreement, three different types of purchase agreement we have. Generally, when we are going for training, what we will do, we will be discussing what is the purchase order, what are the three types of purchase orders, what are the differences between these two, how to create these purchase orders, how to cancel it, how to approve it, how to go for close this purchase order, what information will enter in this purchase order, that generally will be discussing in our trainings, practically and theoretically. But still, there are some more things we will find in the documentation and we will find especially the functional words. But generally in, in training, what happened as a trainer, me or someone else, maximum will try to use simple English. But when we are going for Oracle documentation, there will be a, a functional words. For example, tolerance is there. So tolerance is the perfect word which we are supposed to use at the time of creating the purchase order as well as creating the receipt. Quantity tolerance, price tolerance means the quantity is more or less. The price is more or less. We wanted to go for uh, create an invoice or we wanted to go for receive the goods from the suppliers. Okay, that is one example I given it is. So instead of explaining in front of the business users or in the interviews, uh, instead of telling that more more quantity or less quantity, we'll just say if there is any tolerance in the quantity, uh, we, we don't want to accept the goods from the suppliers. This type of uh, explanation will make us a professional consultant. That's why I suggest every student or even if you are working in the project also, documentation is very important. You must go through the documentation for every topic, whatever we are learning, whatever we are working in the real time. For that, Oracle has provided an excellent cloud documentation that we call it as Oracle OER. Oracle Enterprise Repository. Before we start learning uh, the cloud applications, any financials or supply or HCM or technical, we must to have an idea about this particular URL. OER, Oracle Enterprise Repository for Fusion Applications. For Fusion Applications. Click on Cloud Applications, On-Premises Application. Cloud Applications we are learning now. On-Premises is nothing but the client is going to buy this product, Fusion application CRP product, and is going to install this product in their servers and maintain their DBS. Everything will be under the control of client DBS. That is a big client. Big clients will take up this particular one, but nobody is there so far because in the cloud, Oracle is providing that facility to provide the dedicated server. They are providing the dedicated server to the big clients so that they can maintain their own servers with the help of Oracle, okay? That's why we don't find on-premises applications implementation so far. We will find only cloud implementations. Go to cloud applications. Once we go to cloud applications, let's say we are working for procurement module. So what we have to do, go to procurement. Once we go to the procurement, then what we have to do, we have to go to all books. There are some videos which we will find but these videos will be helpful after you learn some particular course, finance or supply or HCM or technical. Initial stage, we may understand, but we will not be able to do the practice here. 
So go to all books. Once we select all books, we'll come to know which version, which update this is 23A. This is getting starting with our cloud applications. We'll find some starting point, what is cloud, what is meant by managing the cloud, this all. And then we will find some basic users information, how the users can log in and all. This is what uh, the procurement module uses here. We can find the procurement module uses supplier registrations, supplier profiles, and uh, supplier qualifications, requisitions. And here it is, we are talking about purchase order in folets, and uh, we'll find the different types of purchase orders. This, But this is just how we can go for use the procurement module here, how we can use the procurement module. But I just need an implementation process, right? Go to procurement, go to all books, go to here I can find implementation. This is required for us, functional consultants, because we are going to implement this vision applications product to the client according to their requirement, right? So go to this implementation, implementing the procurement module. Select this, HTML. Now I can find here oh, the implementation process for procurement module, how we can set the common options for payables and procurement and business unit wise setups, purchasing wise, self-service procurement configuration, supplier portal configuration, supplier qualification. So we'll find all these uh, details here. This will be doing when we are training, uh, when we are getting trained in our procurement module, we'll be just going to with that. Okay. So this is a very good practice going through the documentation once any particular topic is completed in our training. Here it is. Okay. So this is one where we can find it's a general URL. Everybody can access. There is something called support. There is something called support. Oracle support. Support.oracle.com. This is given once you join in the organization. Once you join in the organization, this... Uh, the support oracle.com will be given for only clients. Okay. So this is uh, used to go for interact with uh, our Oracle support team while implementing or while providing the support to our client. In case if we find some, any errors or struck up or application is taking long time or we are not getting the expected results, then we can communicate with the Oracle team and get the solution. We will raise the SR service request. We'll be able to raise the SR and we will be able to get a reply from Oracle team. Okay, for that generally Oracle also will charge. That's why once we join in the project, we can ask our team leader or project leader, do we have Metalink uh, user account or Oracle support user account? So that credentials will be given by the client. So we cannot get these credentials from outside. Okay. So there we will find not only the raising the request, not only raising the request, you will also find some white papers, documentation, uh, because Oracle, in case if they find any problems, uh, if somebody has raised or if they find, then they'll try to prepare a solution and they'll tell that, okay, you can do like this. This is all. Okay, but this cannot be done from outside. Only if you are working for a particular client, then client will give you the credentials for that. Okay, so this is required only when we are working in the project support.oracle.com. So there are three different options we'll find. One is support.oracle.com. Another one is our documentation. This is general documentation we'll find everywhere. Another one is our readiness in the sense of update in case if there are any updates in the product that we can find. So these are the three things uh, generally will come up. In the training, we'll go through these two. When we go for a project, we'll get a support, support credentials, okay? This readiness is very important for us as a functional consultant, especially because technically we don't find much changes. Even if there are changes, but technical consultant may or may not work in that. But as a functional consultant, it is our basic responsibility must know 
what were the problems in earlier version and what are the new 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 features are introduced in the latest version whether those earlier problems has been solved or not in the current future because that is expected from the uh, functional consultant by the interviewer as well as the client also okay so in case if they if you go if you say i'm working in 23a they will ask you can we create negative amounts in purchase order line if we say no uh, have you not updated your things in your uh, readiness uh, web website that they'll 100 percent they'll tell that's why we have to go through every quarter in this related to our modules we don't need to worry about if you are working in supply chain management you can just go through this you don't need to worry about finance or hcm other options okay that's that's about the documentation part excellent documentation as given by the oracle corporation related for this oracle fusion application crp software Okay, so if you start reading, uh, there will be an excellent and always it will get interest. Yes, we have to go through another one because it's a very good uh, uh, documentation as given step by step. Uh, but we must know it, uh, how we have to learn those things in a sequence order. That's why I'm telling when you are learning, for example, today we talked about um, min max planning in our inventory module. I have explained the topic. And after that, we have done the practice. You, what you can do is you can just log into the applications, first complete the topic and practice it. And once it is done, then let's go to documentation and start learning about min-max planning report and min-max planning process. What are other different scenarios we will find here? So those things you can go through. So that is going to be a very good practice as a functional consultant. Okay, thank you.